Hey everyone, we don't normally do unboxings, but we got a pretty special product from AMD this time. It is finally the combination of a Ryzen CPU and AMD Vega graphics. So I've seen some of the other unboxings. I think we're the only review outlet to get this version of the product. And of course, we'll be doing our normal in-depth testing on this as soon as possible. But other than that, we have a lot of news to get through today, including specs on well, a device similar to this. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the View 71 enclosure. The View 71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The View 71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off. And it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. So this is our weekly hardware news recap video. As always, of course, the big item here is the AMD Ryzen and Vega APU, for which we have specs and prices and everything else to share with you today. A little bit odd that it arrived in a Pop-Tart box, but I guess, um, I don't know, I guess they're just trying to bribe us with with Pop-Tarts at this point. Other news items though, if you're sick of AMD APUs because everyone's talked about them now, we also have some interesting news on Newegg killing GPU commission through their affiliate program. Intel's pushing more Spectre updates that hopefully are more promising this time. And then uh, some items about scams, which should be pretty fun, like the 90 plus power supplies and their better alternative, the 95 plus power supplies. Of course, these are new versions of 80 plus which is an old and retired standard at this point because 90 is bigger than 80 and therefore better we'll confirm all of the apu specs and prices and then move on because that's all that's useful right now we will have testing on this product later through back channel sources but here's a chart that we made that contains everything the 2400g is a four core eight thread single ccx cpu that operates at 3.6 to 3.9 gigahertz and contains 11 Vega CUs, equating 704 streaming processors. Knowing how many compute units the APU has, we can trivially compute everything else. 11 CUs means that we end up with 44 texture map units, or TMUs, as each CU carries four TMUs. For perspective, the RX 480 and 580 GPUs contain 144 TMUs. We would assume that this puts performance a bit above the RX 550, which has eight CUs and maybe a bit below the RX 560, which ranges in CU count at this point. The GPU clock operates at a boost of 1250 megahertz on the 2400G or 1100 megahertz on the 2200G via the Ryzen 3 APU. For pricing, the R5 2400G should land at $170, carrying a four plus zero CCX configuration and 3.9 gigahertz boost clock. This block diagram shows the Vega 11 core that's in the R5 2400G. The architecture overall should be familiar. AMD is still using its four ACEs or asynchronous compute engines as would be found in the RX 580 and Vega cards. The two hardware schedulers remain present as well, marked as HWS. These were introduced in GCN Gen 3 and started getting more use in Gen 4. The HWS units can be updated via microcode through drivers, so some level of firmware patching later on is always possible with these. AMD's graphic illustrates a single geometry engine and a drawstream binning rasterizer, which are accompanied by two pixel engines. There are 11 compute units present, as already shown, and there are 64 streaming processors per compute unit, which is also standard. We've reviewed a lot of APUs in the past. We actually did more APUs than anything else for AMD for a while because it was during a time when there were basically just refreshes of FX alongside some new APUs. So we've looked at them plenty of times and kind of depending on the generation, the year and the price, sometimes they're very good value. And sometimes it makes more sense if you're gaming to buy something like a GT 1030 or an RX 550, $70 price point area, and then buy some $100 CPU to go with it. And you get basically better performance overall. However, it might be different this time because the Vega GPU architecture change is significant and the Ryzen change is also significant. So we have two very large players in the space uh, that need to be tested. So we'll look at that separately once it's time to test. But uh, that's kind of the basics of it all. Interestingly, the materials we've acquired thus far do explicitly note that a Windows 10 version 1709 is required to get the Ryzen and Vega portions of the APU to work together properly. And we also noticed 
that the APU has gotten rid of the TCTL temperature offset. So that TCTL sensor that you'd previously seen in Hardware Info or something where it'd have a 27 degree offset for Threadripper, I believe was the number, that's gone now. Looking at the temperature should be a lot simpler. It'll just be t dye as far as I understand it today. So uh, that's good news. The rest of it we'll just have to look at in testing, but the 2400G and 2200G are the APUs to look at. If you're new to this, APUs are just, it's a CPU that contains a more significant graphics component than you might find on Intel. Now, APU is AMD's way of saying this is a CPU with an integrated GPU. Intel just calls it a CPU at this point, and then they might call it an iGPU or something like that for the integrated graphics. So that's the main news for the APU front. AMD's APUs tend to be pretty powerful in the graphics department. They do give a lot more die space to the GPU component. So it'll be fun to test it, but uh, we are getting that through a side channel source and then we'll be looking at it as soon as it comes in, which shouldn't be too long now. Another thing here, so on the front of CPUs, there was some news a little while back about CPU mining being potentially profitable. And there were some uh, sensationalist pieces online about, is this the end of CPUs? Will there be CPU shortages now? The answer is no. No, there will not be CPU shortages because of crypto mining. It's, it's a great way to get clicks though. Uh, but are CPU shortages coming next? They are not. You know, we, the thing with CPU mining is one, it's not that profitable. Two, if you use something like a 1950X or a 1920X, go back and look at our room ambient temperature test from months ago when difficulty was lower and prices were higher. During that test, if I remember correctly, the 1950 50x that we had running for that on crypto night was doing something like maybe i don't know i, th I think it was like 250 a day it was between two dollars and three dollars a day it's not awful and you might be able to do more if you're more skilled with mining or whatever but the point is you know this is unless it's doing a lot more money per day you're looking at a product that takes like i mean it's like a two foot squared space to run more motherboards with cpus it makes more sense to take all that money and allocate it into GPUs, if you can get them, and run them off of one motherboard, take less area squared. So I, there, there is probably a use case for CPU mining. I'm not arguing that. What I would argue is that no, you don't need to worry about your gaming CPUs going out of stock. And secondly, maybe Threadripper, maybe the high-end HEDT Intel CPUs, maybe those get some popularity for mining. Okay, but, your i7s, kind of the $300 category, i5s, r7s, r5s, I don't think there are going to be warehouses in China filled with motherboards that are doing CPU mining. I'm not an expert there, that's opinion. However, I am fairly confident that we're not going to see like the end of the world of PC gaming because of cryptocurrency. GPU is kind of a special case. Memory, it seems like it's, it's all happening at once. It seems like the prices for everything are going crazy at the same time. I could see how you might think that would spread to other components, but you have to remember, memory prices are high, GPU prices are high. What do those things have in common? DDR4 and GPU memory come out of the same three factories. So of course, if prices are high for one of them because of a memory supply shortage or high demand or whatever, then they're going to be high for the other one. They feed off of each other. CPUs are in a different category. They don't come out of Samsung and Hynix. Uh, they're made either by Intel or by AMD's foundries that they outsource, global foundries typically. So I, I really don't think we're gonna have a CPU shortage. I would be happy to, uh, to come on record saying that because I'm fairly confident that the only shortages we're going to have are other components that are memory related right now. But we'll see, maybe I'll be wrong, maybe some crazy mining algorithm will come out for CPUs and then we'll have a problem. If that happens, tweet at me and say, hey Steve, this thing just came out, could you look at it? And we'll do some testing and look at it. Newegg today revoked its affiliate commission for video cards, which the company's sub-affiliate networks declare to be changed pursuant to, quote, Bitcoin's unexpected popularity. So what they really mean here, of course, is cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's unminable on GPUs. Now, granted, a lot of mining, if you're going through nice hash or whatever, it is going to be paid out in Bitcoin, but you're not mining Bitcoin. So whatever, it's semantics at this point. So either way, uh, the affiliate network thing, I'm sure many of you are aware of this. Basically, 
uh, content creators or anyone really, you could get an Amazon or Newegg affiliate account. If you link people you know to a product and they buy it, then you get a percent commission. And it's not increasing the cost that the customer pays for the product. It's coming out of a, a separate budget that's set aside by Amazon in, in one case or by Newegg and going to the person who linked the product. So that program has been around forever. It's a good way for retailers to fight each other for basically, I don't know, I'll use their word, influencer attention. Where are you driving the sales? And uh, Newegg is changing it now. So GPUs, video cards will no longer be included. Now there's kind of two sides to this. This is less of a mining thing. They're, they're pinning it on cryptocurrency, which is an awfully nice scapegoat. And there is certainly higher demand because of cryptocurrency, but we've talked about this a lot now. We spoke with all the video card manufacturers. Memory has every bit to do with this as cryptocurrency. It's, it's difficult to get supply for memory, period, if you're a manufacturer. And the price has gone up 20 to $30, bill of materials cost, for your video cards. So of course there's gonna be, I mean, you, some of the vendors have now officially increased their MSRP by 20 to $30. See the last news video from last week. So there is more to it than just cryptos. Uh, that is a nice way to make it easy and pin it on people that that everyone, everyone kind of rally against the common enemy. But um, yeah, so this we think is more likely the, the contributor to Newegg killing its GPU affiliate commission is the memory cost. Now, there's two sides to this, because if Newegg is keeping the same prices and killing its commission for that product, that's great. That means they are helping consumers. I'm all for that. I don't need that commission if it means that GPUs can be a bit more affordable. That's fine. And I think a lot of content creators would agree. If they are increasing the price and killing commission, which we'll see if that happens, they've got a couple of days here, then, uh, then it's just trying to make more money off of something that already is being gouged like crazy because demand is high and, and whatever. So we'll see. But anyway, content creators may be interested in that. Newegg uh, is no longer giving commission for video cards, but Amazon still does, BH Photo does, and plenty of other sites, smaller ones, bestbuy.com still does. So yeah, you may see more links like that from content creators. We tend to stick with Newegg and Amazon because just they're easier to use anyway. But uh, interesting news. So uh, next one, Intel pushes more Spectre updates. This is following on a lot of Spectre Meltdown updates we've covered lately. Intel's finally begun the process of shipping more stable microcode. They had some kind of interesting wording in their press release where they basically said uh, they, of course, will continue to encourage people to keep their operating systems up to date and everything else up to date. But I mean, the, the opposing side there is that if you did that previously, then you could have had reboot issues on Intel CPUs because of their flawed microcode updates. So. Uh, a bit of both sides. In the days following the Google Project Zero announcement, Intel scrambled to release its software patch and there was widespread concern over possible performance hits. This was followed by reports of BIOS updates with poor implementation of Intel's patch causing random reboots on Haswell and Broadwell CPUs and then apparently some other platforms as well. Intel reported that they found the root cause of this issue on January 22nd and they even requested that manufacturers halt the distribution of the affected BIOS updates. They've been working on solving the issue since then, and today Intel reported that they're in the midst of distributing fixed patches to OEMs. They also mentioned that they're continuing to beta test their updates with OEMs and partners before moving them to production. So hopefully there's not a repeat of the previous round, although the continue to quote could be read as saying that it was the OEMs who didn't do enough testing last time. Of course, that's really on Intel. The second part of the news post is a plea to users to keep their systems up to date, which is again, a bit rich coming only a week after the bugged update, but still good advice. So this is just kind of a fun news item. This is on some, I guess, scams you could call them. 90 plus power supplies. Uh, so high wattage power supplies targeting cryptocurrency miners are being advertised with knockoff 80 plus certifications. And if you search for Bitcoin power supply on eBay or especially on AliExpress, you will find dozens of power supplies that have been branded as 90 plus or 95 plus gold, for example. 80 plus is the name of the actual organization that does the certification, and there's no such thing as 90 plus. If a power supply were in fact 90% plus efficient, it would still be under the 80 plus brand, but it would be uh, awarded something like 80 plus platinum or titanium 
not gold. And many of the power supplies are also stamped with the Bitcoin symbol. Uh, varies a bit depending on where they stole the art from. And despite GPU mining Bitcoin at home being sort of a thing of the past, they're still branding it that way. Another fun one, this one isn't a 90 plus or 95 plus certification, I guess, but it's kind of a, a strange power supply. It's a 3450 watt single plug power supply. Good luck finding an outlet that will allow you to pull that kind of power in the US. And it's a monstrosity. It's clearly two ATX power supplies that are just side by side in the same casing. And uh, it, it's, it's got the prominent Bitcoin symbols on each fan as well. So I don't think we're gonna buy this and test it because uh, I do in fact need this place to not burn down. But uh, some fun stuff out there on AliExpress, if you just search for Bitcoin power supplies, you have 10 minutes to kill, go do it, I guess. Next one, hard drive failure rates for 2017. So Backblaze is a backup service data backup and recovery. And they release annual updates on their drives that they've used for the last year and their drive failures for the last year. And then they categorize it by the specific SKUs and the vendors. The most impressive numbers for this report were for HGST and Hitachi four terabyte drives, which had less than 1% failure rates in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Failures were relatively high with some Seagate drives and one four terabyte model in particular failed at a rate of about 3% annually. Backblaze has replaced 6,800 failed drives since they began logging in 2013, and 1,508 of those were in 2017. Overall, against all of its drives, the company's logging about a 2% failure rate looking at the last year of data that they published, which isn't awful if they're really getting hammered all the time, but uh, yeah, HGST has looked good for the last couple years, and they continue to do so today. And then back to power supplies for a moment. FSP has a $700 liquid cooled power supply now. I think they're working with Bits Power on this one. And this is the FSP Hydro PTM Plus. It's a 1200 watt slash 1400 watt power supply and will be available for purchase soon. The supply is outfitted with Aura Sync compatible RGB LEDs and of course a liquid cooling block, naturally. What else do you want on a power supply? It's rated 80 plus efficient at 1200 watts cooled by the built-in fan, but the liquid cooling version theoretically raises the limit to 1400 watts. The price tag $700, several times what two high quality 700 watt power supplies would cost, or roughly equivalent to what two air cooled 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supplies would cost. The first 500 buyers will also receive what they're calling quote an AIO pump radiator and fan assembly from bits power and sleeved cables. It's open loop, so it's not really AIO in the same sense as a CLC, but whether any Aura Sync using PC Gamer draws 1200 watts plus for long enough to make it necessary under continuous loads, that's another question. And then finally, there are a couple of hardware sales to point out for the last couple days, and they're going on for a bit. In monitor land, there's the Acer XG270HU, 27 inch panel, one millisecond gray to gray, 144 hertz, 1440p, and FreeSync. That's currently $400. Threadripper 1950X is still at 900 which is versus $1,000 at launch, pretty good, but it does seem like it's more of a permanent price at this point. And the R7 1700 as well seems to be more permanent at around 290 to 300 these days. The i5-8600K has a $15 promo code, and that's really most of the good, and good ones that we saw for the last couple days. So as always, links to everything in the description below. And if you wanna help us out directly, you can subscribe to catch the next videos, including the, the review of this or well, Maybe not exactly this, but you get the idea. And uh, subscribe for more. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus helps out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.